Well, hello, and how are you doing? So I'm going to assume you're expecting to see Mademoiselle Fox. Well, if you look, she's to my immediate left, and she will be joining in just a second. We had a minor technical hiccup. What happened was we came to the very sudden realization that uh, because her YouTube channel is relatively new, that the request to go live needs to be sent in 24 hours in advance. This we did not know. So we apologize. And as a result, we have started a few minutes late and we had to switch it to uh, my YouTube channel, as many of you would be seeing it right now. So apologies to everybody who is waiting somewhere else to see the show. But Mademoiselle Fox will be joining just a couple of seconds. She's just trying to send out a couple of messages to let people know that it's going to be on a different space this evening. So if you could do us the smallest of favors and just help spread the word, we'd really, really appreciate it. We will have Mademoiselle Fox uh, debuting on her channel next week, I uh, promise you. I just uh, didn't know that YouTube was going to put a bit of a roadblock in front of us like that. So, yeah, these things happen. We find a way to work around the technology and fix things up the way we can, when we can. So, Mademoiselle Fox. Is it on YouTube? Yeah, Polly's World. Uh, uh, let me give you the, uh, it's uh, YouTube.com. Hang on a second here. I don't know what the web chain that what the what the web page is. I got to check this just a second. Um, there, it's uh, YouTube.com. Uh, Polly's World, I believe, is what it is. I believe it is. Let me just uh, switch up the accounts here so we can get things figured, and I will give you the exact address in just a second. I just got to open up a couple of tabs here to make the technology work the way we want it to. And let's see. Um, what is the address? YouTube.com backslash at Polly's World 2005. And that will get, uh, that'll get you to the channel where you can, uh, where you can watch. You know, again, apologies that uh, this isn't quite what we expected tonight. Sometimes technology doesn't work out the way we need it to. We're using a different uh, service this evening. And there's a couple of little hiccups here and there that we'll be able to iron out. Uh, the virtual background is, is, is not as smooth as it should be. There we go. That's a little bit better. Mademoiselle Fox, please take the mic. Well... <laughs> Hello, and thank you for your patience. Um, honestly, I've been preparing for this all day, and it was supposed to be under my channel. And, uh, I'm sitting beside uh, an IT AV expert. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't make it work. So, um, you know what? Sorry, Pauline. Fuck it. I'm like, fuck, if you can't fucking figure this out. And I have, my tech skills are quite low. I'm pretty good at plumbing and stuff, but I'm just like, if this man cannot make it work, then uh, I don't know who can. So apologies and thank you. So, oh, T dot Dan, oh, thank you so much for joining in. I really needed, I needed a little boost because I was like, I'll, I'll be honest, I just cried a little bit. I'm like, oh, fuck. So, so right now. No, nope, thank you. No, I put the link in. I know. Thank you for putting the link in, but so I'm just like, join, honestly, I'm like something fucking worked today. And, uh, um, and I'm I'm working on my patience. So I had and I made some notes. Um, oh, Dan, I love you so much. Honestly, Ellen, I love you, and I just. Can we talk about how skewed women's clothing sizing is? <laughs> Absolutely. Because it's redonkulous. <laughs> it's like, no, today you're a two, tomorrow you're an eight. I'm like, I don't know. You know, I, oh, Ellen, I love you so much. Thank you for finding me anyway. And uh, goodness, I just, um, I just, I wanted to start by doing a shout out to my foxes, um, which include women, men, and all genders, but um, I wanted to thank uh, Cassie. I wanted to thank Ellen. 
I wanted to thank my friends um, who are joining in. Um, and there's a lot of them, so be ready. Um, I wanted to thank um, my mom, Mary Charlotte, who's joining in the chat. Um, she's watching. And Jen, Jen. I wanted to thank Jen. Um, I wanted to send a very special shout out to uh, my friends, Holly and Manon. Um, Manon is a nurse. Um, they are, and Holly is uh, in, she works for the federal government. Sorry, I was going to just say their first, their initials, H&M. But um, they are absolutely incredible women who, like, I'll just tell you one little story. Um, my car, my car broke down as it does. And they're like, just take our car. I'm like, okay. I'm like, thank you. That's really, really, really fucking nice. Um, and they're like, I'm like, when do you need it back? They're like, well, we don't care. I'm like, well, thank you. I'm like, I'll bring it back in like three hours. So, um, I wanted to really thank them. And I wanted to put a special shout out to, uh, there's a couple other people. Um, uh, Susan, I have some Susans in my life. Uh, I have a Sylvie in my life, and I know they're tuning in tonight. So I wanted to thank uh, Susan. Uh, I'm not going to say her last name, but she's my mentor, and Sylvie, who's my mentor. And they're like, what? You're my mentor? I'm like, yeah. You scooped me up under your wing, um, you know, 20 plus years ago. Um, when we worked at Indigenous Services Canada, which was called something else then, and oh my gosh, we've been through so much together. And they're like, they're just still like, you know, they're under, I'm under their wing, they're under my wing. But I'll tell you one story. So one day the power went out in a, a building in um, in uh, Gatineau, which was used to be called INAC. And I was like, eight months pregnant <laughs> I had a briefing binder under my arm and I was and we were like holy shit the power just went out I'm like we gotta get the fuck out of here and they're like we gotta get the fuck out of here I'm like well I'm driving a shit ass pickup truck it's parked across the street I'm like do you want to ride home and they're like yeah so we marched down the, like 20 flights of stairs and I'm not telling you this I'm not bragging I'm just saying like these women were like, we've got you. And I'm like, and I've got you. So I wanted to, I did tell them, um, oh, thank you, Jen. Thank you. Um, uh, and yeah, so we, we marched down the stairs and I'm like, let's put this fucking truck into work. And it was a standard, which I love driving a standard. I'm like, let's get the fuck home and let's not have birth in and they're like, yeah. So anyway, a big shout out to Susan and Sylvie. I absolutely adore you. And Linda, fuck yeah. Sorry. I I also wanted to say a shout out to um to Linda, uh, Ellen, if I didn't already say so, Elaine, Jen. Um, I would love to talk about makeup. Well, we're gonna have to come back to that. I hope somebody comes online because honestly, I'm gonna get really friggin' boring. Um. <laughs> Uh, Jen, indeed they are. Um, I thought I would. <laughs> Paul's like, you need to have, and thank you, Paul. Thank you very much for setting this up. And I was just like, before we came on, I was just like, I was losing my shit. Hi, Jay. Hello. Um, wait. Um, softball. Yes. Yes, we are. Um, thank you for joining. Um, when I, uh, sorry, um, I just, I wanted to tell you the story about, because this is feminist, fun, and friendly conversations. But um, as many of you know, Joy, lovely to see you in the chat. Thank you so much. Um, so I went, thank you, Lola. Um, I went to Blues Fest a couple of years ago. Uh, I don't, and anyway, I went with one of my, my 16 or 18 friends named Jennifer. This was with Jenny from the block, who's, <laughs> she's from Guelph, and I told her I was coming on tonight, and I'm like, I'm going to tell the story about, about Pussy Riot, 
and Snoop Dogg. And she's like, oh, all right. So um, we, I was like, you know what? I'm super feminist and Pussy Riot is playing at Blues Fest in Ottawa tonight. And so I'm like, I'm, she's like, well, I'm coming to town and like, let's get tickets. <laughs> and um, I'm like, okay. And like, she's like, well, I'm going to go see Snoop Dogg. And I'm like, well, I'm going to go see Pussy Riot because they are Russian feminists who've been put in jail. <laughs> And that's not fun, I've heard. And then, anyway, so then this huge, hey, Cassie, woo, woo. I'm pussy, I'm sorry, <laughs> Cassie, I'm just about to tell my story about Pussy Riot. Um, so anyway, I'm like, well, you know what? I can't, I can't go see Snoop Dogg. I don't want to see that person. Um, I want to see Pussy Riot because these are young Russian feminists who've been to jail and obviously I'm gonna go there and she's like okay well we'll meet up after so then um she um anyway a he, long story short it was her 50th birthday and she she put in um a bid to go see Wu-Tang Clan on stage um with uh Snoop Dogg to follow and I'm like well actually really I do love Wu-Tang so and then um this huge storm blew in and if you don't believe me it is on my Facebook story like it's this for real happened so the bidding got shut down and she put in a bid for like $200 and then this massive storm blew in and everybody just ran for shelter and then so we're standing under like a tent waiting to see if we should go home or do whatever we were told and um and then she got a text saying you won the bid <laughs> what the fuck? sorry pauline i told you i wouldn't swear tonight but now i am um so i'm like okay I'm like what do we do she's like we just got a text they're like the, the the show is opening up now we have to, they told us to run and run to the stage and I'm like okay let's do that and so we ran to the stage um so for two hundred dollars we got to see Wu-Tang on stage like not actually on stage but like on a little um shelf I don't know what to call it like a little thing on top of the stage and um I'm just like this is awesome and she's like it's fucking awesome and then so the stage manager came up and and you know it was just the two of us me and my jenny from the block and um we were he's like i'm like we only paid for wu-tang we know we have to leave and you can't even have a bottle of water on, on up there and i'm sort of like no no that's okay he's like okay um i would like to see if you would like to stay to see Snoop Dogg and um, we're like yep that sounds good and he's like the only thing is um Wu-Tang Clan and k are gonna come up and join you in the box we're like that'd be fine <laughs> so I, I do have pictures of it and Jen and I just looked at each other we're like what the Look, we're like two tiny white ladies from southern Ontario and we're in this box with Wu-Tang Clan on and we're watching Snoop Dogg I'm like I was meant to go see Pussy Riot because I'm a feminist and I'm like and instead I'm watching Snoop Dogg with like stripper poles and I'm just like well this is how we roll and she's like yep this is how we roll ah <laughs> oh! Jay, please. Oh gosh. I, I'm sorry. I hope you, I hope you jump in. Like, honestly, I desperately don't want to be just me talking, but Wu-Tang Clan was so, they were so, so kind and so respectful. And I was just, my greatest regret of the night was that I didn't take a picture with Wu-Tang. I'm just like, my, my friend and I were just so starstruck. We were just like, this was us the whole night. We were like, I'm just like I should have taken a picture of my, my friend Jenny from the block with Wu Tang, but I'm just like, uh, uh, you know, because I, I didn't want to be a fangirl. We didn't want to be rude, and they were there to see Snoop Dogg, and um, 
and people probably have different opinions about Snoop, but um, I'm just like, well, oh, Ellen, come on, girl, Wu Tang. Somebody, I hope somebody puts it in the chat. Like, I think you would like Wu Tang. I mean, they're like very, very. I, I love hip hop. I have to say. <laughs> I'm just dying on the chat. But I think you'd like, if you like hip hop, you'd like Wu Tang. If you don't, that's okay. But um, um, uh, I also just wanted to, uh, I, uh, I'm desperately, desperately wishing somebody would jump in instead of me. <laughs> Cash rules, T dot. Absolutely. Um, I wanted to say a shout out to my mom uh, who's joining in night her name's mary charlotte and um uh, she was the prettiest girl in renfrew i'm not gonna lie she was told that on the street um she was walking with my stepdad who's who's greek and who's just like absolutely smitten with her like always and they were walking down the street in renfrew and somebody stopped her and said oh my god mary charlotte are you Mary Charlotte, is that you? And he, and she's like, yeah. That's me. It's Mary Charlotte. And and she's like, you were the prettiest girl in Renfrew, and you had the best sweaters. And my stepdad, like, yeah, I did marry the prettiest girl in Renfrew. <laughs> oh, Paul, please take over for the love of. <laughs> Sorry, can can you hear me? I'm going to have some um, tea out of my beaver mug. Look at this doggy dog here right there. Look at this little cutie pie. Oh. She doesn't believe in personal space at all. Um, she will come and sit right on me whenever she feels like it. Don't you, Lola? Huh? Hey, Lola. See if we can get this to work a little bit better. There we go. Yeah, so I'm just trying to, um, we're working with a different set of software this evening. And one of the issues we had was uh, YouTube doesn't allow us to go live uh, because it's relatively a new channel. So I'm using StreamYard instead of Restream because uh, the free version of StreamYard has some software on it applications on it that we can use and restream doesn't allow us to use some of the things we wanted to use so we thought we'd give this a go and uh it's the software is working good the interface seems to be working good the only issue is we just couldn't go live uh, on youtube so i'm sure that was a little distressing <laughs> okay um i just i also wanted to sorry pop it, pop it. Please stay online. I'm sorry. I'm so stupid. I'm tired. But um, I wanted to say a big, big uh, shout out to my Twilight Oxes, which is a group of women who um, I've gone on cross country skiing adventures with. And I believe Gina is G dot. Sorry, is um her nickname is G spot. I'm not true. Um, she's on the chat and um, also my one of my besties. Honestly, my bestie is Pimo, um, which she's nicknamed after the prime minister's office because she's <laughs> very, she's large and she's bossy. <laughs> it's Pauline is her name. Um, Teresa, Teresa, uh, Kirk Perfect. Her last name is Kirkpatrick, but we just call her Kirk Perfect because she's fucking awesome and it was Pimo who told me she's like you swear a lot and you sh you need to maybe you should not swear and I'm like okay I won't fucking swear <laughs> so um anyway those are, and Stacy um and I apologize for anyone I'm forgetting but I'm just like the those that group of women is just like incredible like we've got each other's back like nobody's business it's just like you need something oh sorry i did want to say also um sue uh sue c and sue other sue um so, so what, what i wanted, I wanted to, mention, to mention and this, and this is, is relevant, relevant. Um, um so, so we, we have, have this, this uh 
we have uh, we have clothing swaps like once a year and this sweater was given to me gifted to me um at the clothing swap by susie who is uh it was her mother's and um she she rescues cats and dogs and on top of her full-time job and she brought this beautiful sweater to the clothing swap and uh I'm just so honored to wear it. So thank you, Susie. Okay, who who is coming on? Because seriously, I'm fucking I'm done. I got nothing else. Nothing. <laughs> Linda, for the love of for the love of something, whether you want to come on out on screen, well, can, if anybody wants to join, they'll they'll just show up right here, and all you have to do is okay. click on. See right. Now I do that. It's me. And then I do that. So if anybody joins in, you just have to click on that. Okay. Okay. It's hard to it's hard to produce when you're out out of the studio and I don't have the production software on my phone. Mm, I'm gonna give it over to the host, to the man who's honestly more feminist than me, which is I find irritating. <laughs> I don't know if there's any truth to that. It's still, yeah, no, still I will not building out the studio. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be on camera. Like I'm, I'm, I'm not very comfortable on camera. But if somebody wants to come in, not on camera, that'd be awesome. Just to chat. Oh, just to join in. Yeah, it's, and like I said, I, I really do apologize. Uh, I know it was very stressful for Bridget. Uh, so I'm just trying to get framed up here. I'm not used to. Oh, can't see that. Uh, yeah, I, I know it was stressful for Bridget, and it was stressful for me because of, this is what I do. But it was like, oh, I didn't know YouTube would not allow you to go, to go live because it's a new channel. You need to put the request in, and it's like, oh, you can go live in 24 hours. I'm like, I didn't know that. It's been years since I've had to deal with that. So an oversight on my part. Okay, Lola. See, Lola doesn't believe in personal space. <laughs> <laughs> no, she does not. No, yeah. she's, she's literally standing on me. Um, but yeah, so so next week, hopefully next week we can get this right and have it on your channel. You can mm -hmm. see the Streamyard logo up on the on, on Lola's nose right now, which is a duck. I don't know why. Oh uh, which is what we're using instead of Restream, just because there's a, a couple of. Uh, we can put a uh, intro and extra software on this, and we can have up to six guests in studio, and we're just using the demo version. So I thought I'd give it a go because I'd heard good things. And so far, the software seems to work well. It's just a question of can we get things on YouTube? So that'll be for next Thursday. Hey, look, Saturday we went at the last minute and did a little thing. Today we got a little bit more organized. It's working the kinks out. When we first debuted our show, we had a lot of issues, a lot more than this. Uh, so we're doing okay. I'm sorry, did, did you just say you had some kinks? We, oh, stop it. Stop it. You stop it. Ellen, honestly, like anyone who wants to join... Uh, without on camera, I totally understand. Like it, it would just and Linda, like, would just so so welcome, and Ellen, like, honestly, would so welcome your presence. Um, and uh, yeah, um, because you know, eventually Lola and Paul and I are gonna get boring. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll go put the link back in the chat. So just give me a sec here, and. Uh... I'll yeah, no, like I, I totally understand not wanting to go on camera. Like, totally get that. Just a sec. Hang on. Just a sec. And so, uh, just just to keep things moving, uh, I thought I had brought my. Um... Oh, okay. Oh, awesome, Ellen. Um, I I forgot my my fox mug at home at my place, so I drew a fox. There you go. Which is, you know, and now I'm just going full full beaver. I'm just using my beaver mug. Oh, please, Ellen. We need to read your stories. Otherwise, I'm going to have to tell people about um, when I went through an estuary in Costa Rica. Um almost got eaten by an alligator or a crocodile <laughs> yeah yeah that's a trust trust me we're gen x there's no reason we should still be alive and yet somehow here we are yeah, i don't paul, i don't get it oh please take over i got nothing 
I have nothing. Well, I don't know. What do we want to discuss? Emily Bronte? No, that's a joke. I, I, I don't know anything about Emily Bronte. I know she's a writer. I know she's a famous one. Uh, you know who was my famous uh, most? Uh, yeah, let's try that again. My favorite. Uh, and I, I could. I guess you could say she was feminist, but uh, it wasn't called feminism at the time. She was just a writer. And Jennifer Jason Lee played the part of her in the biopic. Dorothy, no, shoot. Oh, I'm drawing a blank on her name right now. Brilliant writer, had some of the best quotes I've ever read, and I'm blanking out on her name. Mm -hmm. Not Dorothy Dandridge. That was, uh, Halle Berry played the part of her, uh, and she was an actor, not not a writer. <laughs> she, she, she doesn't, no um, such thing as personal space with this doggy. Uh, Ellen, I'm so excited that you're going to jump in. Paul, would you like to talk about... Um, your dog's digestional issues today no. <laughs> or something. She, so yesterday I took her out. It was disgusting. It's like, she, and, and I'll just say, I'm, may I preface? <laughs> Lola does want her own show day. I'm like, let's set her up. But um, <laughs> like, oh, Paul almost passes out and barfs when there's like, who involved in tonight? Three times. <laughs> diarrhea each time. And I'm like, I'm scooping dog diarrhea out of the snow desperately hard. And it was just like, I'm like, oh, this is really fucking disgusting. It was really nasty. And then she did it again on the way back home. But uh, it was in the snow and it was a smaller one, obviously. And I'm, I'm like, I scoop up all the snow in the bag. And I'm walking along, and, and Bridget says something to me, and I'm, I'm like, sorry, I'm you did literally... not. I did it. No, I carried a bag of shit. Well, okay, wait, there was like three bags of shit. Like, let's be yeah, honest. Yeah. You know, you, I you had did one, you had two. You did. Mm. It was literally, I was walking around with a bag of shit. You know, if you had a said to me a year ago, <laughs> <laughs> a year from now, there will be a snowstorm in April. <laughs> uh, you will have a, a lady living with you. And an 80 pound dog, I would have said, You're out of your mind. That'll never happen. Well, you know, these things happen. And they well, certainly and, did. And uh, um, Paul, may you, um, would you mind helping Ellen? Because she's trying to. Yeah, she's just, to just, just a sec. Okay. Hang on. She's having, tech, she's having tech issues. Um, okay, I'll just put the link back in. Yeah, no, I just, I, uh, Ellen, I'm with you. It's, technology is something. Yeah, if you, if you use that link, you will. Uh, you should be able to join StreamYard, and we'll see you pop up. It's uh, a little bit finicky and funny. I had to do it twice before I could get it to work, but it does work. Yeah, and it just and might be a little finicky. Take your time. We're more than happy to wait with you. Uh, wait for you and if you want to talk i'm gonna this is i'm sending this out to jen um and also softball thank you for mentioning dorothy parker that's an amazing person dorothy parker that's who i was thinking of thank you i knew it was dorothy i couldn't get the last name and Kaz, Kaz just wrote well paul my family collected pregnant mares there <laughs> Wow. I don't even have words. I'm, okay, I was going to tell a horse story, but um, I just lost the thread because of what Cassie wrote, which is so funny. I can't eat. Cassie, I just peed my pants with horse urine. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> Good evening, Elaine. Um, I was going to tell you, I was going to talk to you about makeup um, a little bit because um. I'm fancy like that. Uh, and will you please come in, sweetheart? Linda's here. Oh, Linda. Okay, go. Girl, <laughs> take over. I'm here. I had to get my husband to shut the hell up because he's playing the guitar. <laughs> so you would have been able to hear it in the background. <laughs> Bless your soul. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> well, it's your show. What do you want to talk about? 
you're supposed to have subjects for the guests. I don't right? want to talk about anything. No. Uh, have, have, I mean, I can. I mean, <laughs> I'd love to just hear what you want to talk about. You were talking Look at, about you're authors. already famous. Like, I'm sorry. Thank you for honoring us with your presence and being super famous and fucking hilarious. <laughs> Whatever you want to talk about. I'm just about famous. Drink, drink a tea out of my, my beaver cup. I've got a mason jar, so. Oh, I have one too. Well, I can't even, I don't even know how to put it on. I've got my water here, my tea here. I have some, I do have, I don't want to brag. But I do have some Cadbury chocolate yeah, that Paul got me. And um, I'm going to eat it while you talk. <laughs> <laughs> while you were talking about authors, do you know uh, mm -hmm. Mona? How do you say her name? I never say her name properly. Mona El mm -hmm. She has a, um, well, she was a reporter for Reuters for like 10 years. And she specialized in the Middle East. And she was stationed there. And then she went independent and she has articles occasionally in the Washington Post and places like that, the New Yorker. Um, but now she has she have writes pretty much only for her Substack. And she's written a couple of books. She is a feminist author. She's got a great book that um, is called The Seven Deadly Sins for Women and Girls, where she's talking about the characteristics that um, are, were always considered negative for women. And she's turning them around into how women have to take back those characteristics and make them our own. Things like being powerful, being ambitious, being lustful, being profane. I'm sorry, did you just say lustful? Lustful and profane. Uh, oh, I can't remember. I, I, can't remember I, all seven. I appreciate this conversation so much. <laughs> so uh, it's a really good book. I recommend everybody read it. The Seven Deadly Sin Seven Deadly Sins for Women and Girls. And uh, it's what you need to own your own life as well as be successful in whatever job you might have. Mm. Um, she's on Twitter. She gets controversial, um, but she's a really good read, and she swears a lot. I fucking hate swearing. She's got a lot of experience with the Middle East, so she does a lot of stories that you don't hear mm -hmm. very, very often from that area about what's going on with women in the Middle East. Um, honestly, that's a, a really great recommendation, and. Um... Apropos of nothing, um, do you have opinions on drinking out of jam, gar jam jars? Because there's a lot of discussion in the chat. I'm just like, my, like my mom was just like, we're not trailer trash. I'm like, well, mm, we kind of are. And she's like, we don't drink out of jars. I'm like, mm, it's trash. just a jar. I'm like, mom, I don't care. <laughs> like, oh, I don't it know. Holds it holds liquid. Why not drink out of it? <laughs> Oh, I see it. If you're thirsty and you've got something that holds liquid, drink out of it. Doesn't that make sense? Yes. I don't know. Linda, you're, you're winning. You definitely, that was, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> it just seems to make sense, doesn't it? Yep. <laughs> What else have you got? And I think I think Elaine's gonna join. Oh, you mean Ellen? <laughs> Sorry, Elaine. Ellen. I don't know. Like I'm so tired. But um, what I'm looking forward to, honestly, is um, my service berries are coming up soon, and my wild mm -hmm. strawberries, and I want to just like smush them into some uh, sugar and lin and lemon, and put them in a jar and drink it in my backyard that sounds good and, yeah it's gonna oh, be good so oh Hello. ellen's in the town ellen can you hear me yes we can hear you okay good <laughs> yay hi ellen i am well how is everyone 
I am well. And what would you like to talk about? I, I don't want to talk about anything. I just want to listen. You want to talk about jars? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I've got a pantry full of mason jars. Oh, shut the front door. I used to can a lot of stuff. Okay, do you believe uh, in like up north? Like, I had, did you? Do you do? You, do you like the hot boil thing? Because I don't. Honestly, I'm like I'm I'm afraid to do it. Oh yeah, yeah. That was the best way to preserve stuff to keep it from like poisoning us. So yeah, I did that <laughs> when I made uh, jam. I did that. Uh, tomatoes when I canned tomatoes. Any of that when I made pickles. Um, we, uh, we actually built a greenhouse when we lived up north, so mm. I was able to grow a lot of stuff. And, and um, will you remind the listeners where you lived up north? Uh, we lived about. 100 kilometers northwest of New Liskard, we had about five acres of property in the bush on a lake. And we lived there for 12 years. It was nice while we were there. Um, and what, what would you pickle? I'm a quick pickler myself. I don't have the skills to do a, a, a hot boil of the jars. Uh, well, pickle. I, I did bread and butter pickles. I love to make bread and butter pickles. It was nice while we were there. So we, um, I was always having cucumbers. So for like the entire month of August, I was making bread and butter pickles every other day because <laughs> they would grow like crazy. I did bread and butter pickles. Um, do you know what to do with a big zucchini? I can think of a few things. <laughs> I know I can say that to you. More than one thing comes to mind. I think I'm welcome, Tabby G. I don't know. Like, what what does one do with the big zucchini? Make smaller zucchini. Perhaps. I don't. I don't. I've got nothing. Ellen, more, what have you more, got? More do you have any zucchini out of it? Ellen, do you have any thoughts on big zucchinis? Zucchini marmalade. You could also make a bunch of slices and make lasagna with it. I have not heard of a zucchini marmalade, honestly. Like, I would really like to, honestly, let's talk about zucchini. <laughs> zucchini marmalade, zucchini relish, zucchini bread. Zucchini bread is delicious, like with, like, chocolate chips and, you know, you can sneak vegetables into your children's lunch. You're like, mm, mm, mm. no, it's not a uh, vegetable. It's, um... It's a bread with uh, chocolate. And they're like, oh, it's delicious. I'm like, mm -hmm, yeah, it is. And then you can have it for breakfast without feeling guilty. Yeah. No, I think it's I think it's an incredible vegetable. Yeah. I used to can as well. I haven't done it for years. Um, we used to can a lot of tomatoes, pickles, Bartlett pears, uh, and jams. And softball. I would love it if you would post your mom's recipe for pineapple zucchini bread. And uh, uh, so I live near, um, this is honestly, I love, I love talking about food. I live near um, Little Italy in Ottawa. And I mean, the, the Italian folks who live there, they do not let any inch of their yard stand without producing food. Honestly, I love, I love talking about food. They do not let any inch of their yard stand stand producing food i've i've participated in um tomato canning like but they do it every fall i think the most we've done is like a few hundred jars of tomatoes but they have it all set up in um tomato canning like but they do it in like do you have any uh sorry massive dog on me but i'm like uh, like my my preferred approach to because um, I don't I don't uh, do a lot of I don't really do canning 
Um, I just sort of wash the potatoes or the tomato, sorry, the tomatoes, and then I throw them in a Ziploc and put them in the fridge, in the fridge or the freezer. I find that easier, but um, I would like to progress uh, in my canning abilities. Any advice is welcome. Uh, get a canning. Uh, see, I know you've got that. The best way, okay. well, I learned how to do it because I learned from my mother. But I would say just get a canning book and experiment. Okay. The only way to do it is trial and error. And But once you get the hang of it, it's it's not that hard. It's just labor intensive. And once you get the hang of it, you'll have it. So just get a book, get all the supplies you need, get the great big pan canning pot and the jars and the ladle and all that stuff. It all comes in a kit. You can get it in a kit and um, everything you need. Yeah, and then I just do. follow the canning right. recipes to make sure you're doing it safely. Well, I, I and that's the, the safety thing is the thing that troubles me is like, and, and sorry, this, I will find the feminist author who wrote about this, but I'm like, you can kill people if you don't can things properly. Yes. You right. Can. Like you can, you, you can, can give them botulism. And so I'm just like, like I don't mind the labor I don't mind the work but I'm just like I don't want to kill somebody by canning something I don't know what your thoughts are on that but I'd love to hear them uh the key with tomatoes is making sure you have enough acid so you get you know those bottle that bottles of lemon juice you see in the grocery store they're perfect for canning tomatoes and you just add like a tablespoon or so to every jar and you're covered you're fine then you process yes. it for the for the amount of time that the book tells you is safe to process it in the in the can in the canner, and you're fine. You're covered. And if it if it if you just want to make sure, test it on yourself. Thanks, <laughs> Thank you, Linda. I'm like, oh no, I'll kill myself first and then leave the rest in the fridge. <laughs> I've been canning stuff since I was a kid. I've never killed anybody. Let not, by, not by canning. <laughs> I don't even know. Well, congratulations. <laughs> I'm glad that you haven't killed anybody. <laughs> that you were just you were just ridiculous, Ellen. I don't know. Ellen, I don't, we want, so want you to join. I think oh, I have it well, figured sorry, out. Still, okay, will you please take over? Goodness. Is, is this, I, I, can, I can't hear myself, but maybe I'm not supposed to. Now you should be able to hear yourself. Hi, yeah. Ellen. If Hello. you can hear me. Yes. Uh, sorry, I got a little too close to the mic there. Am I got, getting feedback from my headset. I'll, I'll just give me a sec here. So yeah, if you have a headphones or earbuds, if you can plug them into your computer, that's great. But yes, make sure I you have headphones on because it will feedback. Am I still it's getting feedback? Show. It's your show. You got it. You I got don't it. care. Like, can you please go on screen? Like I'm tired of seeing. My... <laughs> I'd rather see your face on screen than mine. <laughs> Shouldn't right. you ask that, Mr. Handsome? Yeah. Please. <laughs> And if you don't go on screen, I'm going to make soup in the crock pot. Okay, Ellen <laughs> and Linda, I did something very, very naughty. I was like, can we get a slow cooker for your place? And he's like, no. I'm like, well, I'd really like to have a slow cooker. And he's like, no. And I'm like, well, we're to win today anyway. <laughs> slow cookers are great. Slow cookers are fantastic. He's like, I have enough stuff in my house. I'm like, mm hmm but you don't have a slow cooker, so. And like, so I lied. I did, because I'm a liar with pants on fire. Paul, get back here. And I was just like, you know what? I did order a slow cooker from Walmart today, and I put meatballs in it. And I promised, I promised to take it back to my place. And then I'm just like, actually, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> And like, yeah, he, I'm like, I can set you up in the morning with food and it'll be warm 
and you can come home to a hot cooked meal. And I'm not, I'm not lying. I am the best fucking wife in the world. No, I'm kidding. But I'm just like, I'm like, I am getting a slow cooker for you because you don't cook, you eat. I don't know why you eat when I'm not here, but I'm just like, mm, no. <laughs> All right, over to Paul. And now the slow cooker lives there now. Okay, slide over. <laughs> Slide over. I'll give you that mic. Hang on. You got too much stuff in the way here. <clears throat> the fog on there. there we go. So I got this mic. Ooh. You'll have this mic. And that's close enough. One, two, three. There we go. Just get my headset on so I can. Lola watch. needs a mic. You can see our dog here needs to participate yes. in the program. We need a Lola cam. Do you have anything that you would like to say? Do you want to do your grumbling? That you She'll do? just lick the mic, probably. Okay. Don't worry about it, sweetheart. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, you can see this this dog here is really into personal space. Not at all. Not at all. So, yeah. Um, into everybody else's personal space. Oh, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, she's a lovely girl. I love her more than uh, I could ever tell you, uh, and, and I'll make sure she has a very good life for as long as as long as possible. Um, she's three now, so she could live to be thirteen, fifteen, so maybe ten years. Hopefully, not that long. But, um... oh, Bridget, <laughs> what? I'm going to pretend what you didn't that? just say that. Jesus Christ, well, woman. I just want to say thank you, Gassy, for standing up with me with slow cookers. Bam. I, I eat I eat a lot I eat a lot of pasta, rice, chicken. I cook. You just have never seen me cook. I was a sous chef for years. He like has, a long time. He has never cooked in a year. I'm just saying. Well, our, that's true. That our, is true. Our anniversary is coming up. Thank you, T Dot Dan. Like our anniversary is April 13th. I'm like do you, okay, I've, I've heard you say that you can cook. Like, could you cook something? Well, here's so the thing. You, I'd be happy to. Cooking? I'd be happy to cook. But the thing is, every time I come home, you've already, like, oh, here's an amuse-bouche. Here's a little appetizer. And dinner will be here served in five minutes. I'm like, okay. Like, if you've, you've, you've done all of that, I'd, how am I supposed to cook now? I tried to cook the other night. Last night I tried, no, this evening I tried to help you. And you're like, get out of the kitchen. I'm doing it. I'm like, so... You know, I'm not really encouraged to cook for her or for us. That is true. And I just want to tell a tiny story and then I'm going to really, really want to hand it back to Paul. But um, so, you know, I have an amazing stepfather. He's amazing. He's so kind. He's like the, he is the best man I've ever met in the world. Um, and Paul is number two. But um, he. I've been called that before. <laughs> so my stepfather, Angela. But um, bam, bam. So he's like, I'm like, how did you win over my mother? And he's like, well, I asked her out 18 times. Um, and uh, she eventually and, said yes, I guess. And he, and the last time he asked her out, and so they met like at a li a University of Waterloo library party, and they met like over the hummus, and um, and. You know, the woman who had hosted the party was like really after Angelo, my stepdad, and 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 then he saw my mom, and he's like, I want to like to date her. I really like her. And we talked, and we had some mamas, and then he, like my mom was like, Nah, I don't know. I'm just gonna drive my 1969 Chevelle really super fast, and I don't really know if I want to go out with anybody. And I have two kids, and I'm just like, that's awesome. Anyway, so he asked her out like 18 times, and then my my mom was like, "Well, my mother is visiting, um, and uh, I don't think I can go out with you tonight." And and he was like. I would like to take you and your mother out for dinner. That's the right answer. Good answer. Yep. Yep. That is very respectful. Did you I take her say. to the Ponderosa? Oh, probably. Ponderosa and Waterloo. And um, I'm just like, damn, that's awesome. She's like, I have two children and they are 
ding dongs. And he's like, I don't care. <laughs> so anyway, so he won her over big time. And um, um, anyway, I just, Angelo, when you listen to this, I love you so much. You're just the kindest man in the world. And his name is uh, Angelo. Uh, he's from Greece. He came to Canada at six years old from uh, the Civil War in in Greece, and you know he was airdropped. Uh, um, sorry, I get a little emotional, but he was he he was given food that was airdropped from a helicopter. And um, anyway, so he's grateful for every thing that my mother makes um and he's like well, anyway when he went on the first date with my mom he's like i'm really good at beef stroganoff i'm like i'm like did you make it for her and he's like yeah i did i made beef, beef stroganoff i'm like well you've never made it since like you haven't made a, you've not made a meal other than something from a can <laughs> since then he's like well I do everything else and I'm like okay respect <laughs> so <laughs> you know yeah, honestly that man can do nothing wrong in my in my eyes what do you what do you call a hundred cows masturbating beef stroganoff oh, good grief <laughs> come on that's funny I would just like to point out that beef stroganoff is excellent in the slow cooker no, I'll take your word for it I've, I've prepared it but I'm, I'm not a slow cooker kind of guy um, thank you, Cassie. Love you. Well, here's the thing. It's like, she's like, yeah, this slow cook would be great. You can use it. And I'm like, if you think that I'm going to get up at 5, take the dog out at 5.30, jump on the computer, get prepared to do a morning show, do a morning show, take a shower, go into the office, when, when, when do I have time to put anything in a crock pot in the morning? I don't. And also, Saturday and I Sunday? No, I have no idea what I want to eat on at 5 p.m. And, and if I prepare something in the morning that I don't like at 5 p.m., it's like, it's well, in the fridge, and I'll make something else. Uh, just, you know, she's, she sees herself. What? She sees herself in the camera. Aw, look at her. Yeah, she sees herself in the monitor. She's, and she's, a, kind of, she's a beautiful girl. She's, she's talking. She's a beautiful girl. Do you have anything you want to say? And she goes quiet there just as I, as I put the mic on. <laughs> okay enough of the licking that's enough of the licking thank you thank you very much i appreciate that i'm covered in dog slobber oh my goodness lola listen to you that mic picks her up eh because that's a studio mic it's super sensitive this dog by the way as beautiful as she is and as majestic as she is and as good as she is Oh my God, does she rot this house when she farts? <laughs> oh my dear God. Uh, what it's, are it's, you feeding her? A cat like that. <laughs> oh, well. Obviously the wrong thing. Smelly dog, smelly dog. What, what are, are we feeding, feeding you? you? Listen to her. I got to take her out. She's getting anxious. She needs to go. All right. Well, maybe this is a good point to, uh, to sign off. Um, Thank you so much, everyone, from uh, for joining. And uh, now we're going to go outside and clean up diarrhea. It's not actually a joke. That, that is going to happen. I apologize to everybody yeah. for knowing kind that. Might be time for a dietary change. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah we figured that out Linda, yeah, earlier right. today. I, I don't want to lie. I'm not wearing pants right now. So I'm She's in a dress. On wearing a cute dress but i'm gonna put on some pants because it's um what's a crock pot <laughs> Dan. oh google it google it no idea what that means is that is that naughty <laughs> behavior talk i don't know what's a crock pot hit him with a pillow doesn't know what a crock pot is <laughs> i don't know what he's saying i don't know like dan if you say i don't know what you're saying but i might send you one on the from Amazon. Okay, I'm gonna jump because I gotta and get that dog ready to go before she uh, yeah. soils. I'm gonna put on pants and uh, go outside. It's a snowstorm in Ottawa tonight in uh, Snottawa. Um, and thank you all for joining. Thank you for your support. And um, okay, I find.
Honestly, Paul is a bit bossy. <laughs> you're gonna, yeah, you you got the headphones wrapped all around you. You're let's, gonna destroy them. Let's be honest. I find him a bit bossy, but I will. Let's break up this fucking I'm sausage. To do my job Linda, as a producer. Mm -hmm. Let's break up this sausage party again, okay? I really appreciate that you joined. No problem. Love you. <laughs> See you next time. Okay. Alrighty, I guess we'll. Uh, oh, we got, no, 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 no. You got. You can't put your headphones close to the microphone. No, no, no. Obviously, we're still live, by the way. Oh well, good yeah. to know. Well, you, you, you gotta, you gotta give me a minute so I can get these things no. done. All right. All righty.